Finite Math, Chapter 9, Section 2, The Multiplication Principle, Permutations, and Combinations. The multiplication principle helps us determine the number of possible combinations when we're faced with many choices. For example, let's say you want to go from home to the store and then to a friend's house. Let's say that you have three possible routes from home to the store and then two from the store to your friend's house. How many different ways could you make this trip? Well, here's one way to illustrate the problem. Let's say A is your home, B is the store, and C is your friend's house. You could go route A from the home to the store and then route one to your friend's house, or A then two, or B then one, B then two, or C one, or C two. And that gives us a total of six. Here's another way of illustrating it. You're going from point A to point B. There's three possible ways of doing that. And then from point B to point C, there's two possible ways. And again, you end up with six possibilities. And notice that we get that that's two times three, which is the number of routes um, to each place. That's how it works. So the multiplication rule says, suppose that n choices must be made with m1 ways to make choice 1, m2 way, m ways to make choice 2, and so on until we get m sub n ways to make choice n. Then there are m1 times m2 all the way down to m sub n different ways to make the entire sequence of choices. In other words, you're going to multiply the different ways to make each choice together. So here's a couple of examples. Give these a try. Pause the recording while you do that and resume to check your answer. For example, one, uh, she has nine skirts, eight blouses, and 13 pairs of shoes. Nine times eight times 13 means she has 936 choices for outfits. Example two, um, you have 731 sink faucets, 543 bath vanities, 607 medicine cabinets. That gives you a total of 240,938,331 possible combinations of those three items. Try this example. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. combination uh, is set to open any three-letter sequence. How many sequences are possible? Well, there's 26 letters of the alphabet, so you have 26 choices for each of the three letters. So 26 times 26 times 26 is 17,576 different sequences. Now, Part B says, well, what if you can't repeat? Well, in that case, we have 26 choices for our first letter, 25 for our second, and 24 for our third, giving us 15,600 possible combinations. Now, factorial notation is a short way of indicating that we want to multiply a series of numbers from a given number down to 1. For example, maybe we need to multiply 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, rather than writing all that out, we symbolize it by writing a 5 and an exclamation point. And again, that's 5 factorial. It doesn't mean that the 5 is really super excited about anything. All right, so for any natural number n, n factorial means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. By definition, 0 factorial is 1. I know that's a little weird, but again, that's kind of a defined term there. Now, notice that 6 factorial is 6 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 6 factorial could be written as 6 times 5 factorial, because the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is 5 factorial. Or it could be written as 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. So you can split things up this way. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, sometimes when we want to divide, it can make the dividing go a lot faster. For example, we're going to do 100 factorial divided by 98 factorial. Pause the recording, give this a try, and uh, try to use that fact that we just talked about a second ago, and then resume to check your answer. 
Okay, 100 factorial can be written as 100 times 99 times 98 factorial. And then we've got 98 factorial in the denominator. So the two 98 factorials will cancel, leaving us with 100 times 99, which is 9,900. Now you try this one. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. All right, the easiest thing to do is to write 5 factorial as 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. The 3 factorials cancel and leave you with 5 times 4 over 2 times 1. And then again, you can cancel the 2 with the 4, but that gives you 10. Now try this example. Morse code uses a sequence of dots and dashes to represent letters and words. How many sequences are possible with, at most, three symbols? Okay, pause the recording, give this a try, and resume the recording to see how you did. Okay, at most means you can have one, two, or three symbols, so we need to consider um, each case. So if there's one symbol, you can have either a dot or a dash, so there's two possibilities. If you have two symbols, you can have two dashes, or two dots, or a dash and a dot, a dot and a dash, so there's four different combinations there. And then if you have three symbols, there are eight possibilities. So altogether, we have 2 plus 4 plus 8, which is 14. And, uh, and then it makes the comment that there are, since there are 26 letters in the alphabet, some letters are represented by sequences of four symbols in Morse code. A permutation is a set of elements, of a set of elements is an ordering of the elements. For example, there are six permutations or orderings of the letters A, B, and C, and there they are right there. Okay, and we're talking specifically about putting them in different orders. When determining the number of permutations, the order is important. It's kind of like um, it's important in a contest who gets the first place, the second place, and the third place. Or when you're electing people to an office, it's important who's the president, the vice president, and the secretary. Those are very distinct places and um, you could have the same three people in those places, but, um, you know, kind of mixed up and it would be a different combination. So we can use the multiplication principle for determining the number of possible permutations of any set. So the number of per permutations of an n element set is n factorial. But sometimes we don't want to just order everything in the set. We just want to pull a few things out like this. A teacher has five books and she wants to display three of them side by side on her desk. How many arrangements of three books are possible? And the order is going to be important here. Okay, think about it for a minute and pause the recording while you think about it and then resume and see how you did. Okay, here's the way to think about it. She needs to fill three spaces. So for her first space, she has five books to choose from. For her second space, well, she's already placed one book, so now she's got four to choose from. And for the third place, she has three books to choose from. So five times four times three means that she has 60 possible arrangements. Now, we wanted to arrange five objects taken three at a time in that example. In general, we say that is the permutation of n objects taken r at a time, and it's symbolized with n, little n, p, and then r as a subscript also. We see that from the previous example, that that, common, that permutation was 5 times 4 times 3. Well, another way of writing that would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 2 times 1, because the 2 times 1s would cancel. Another way of writing that would be 5 factorial over 2 factorial. Okay, now compare that to the symbol or to what we're trying to do. We're taking five objects, three at a time. Okay, the top number is the number of total objects. The bottom number is the difference between the number of objects and how many we want to take at a time. Five minus three is two. And that gives us this formula. So if you have a, a permutation of n objects taken r at a time, and notice that r is smaller than, less than or equal to n, it's the number of permutations of n elements taken at r at a time, then we have n factorial over n minus r factorial. By the way, you do have a key on your calculator that will compute factorials for you. 
uh, you want to go to uh, the math key and then over to probability and you will see a permutation key. You will also see a key for combinations uh, and you, you will enter the N first and then choose the P and then you'll enter the R and hit enter and it will give you the solution for that. Try this example. In early 2012, seven candidates sought the Republican nomination for president at the Iowa caucus. In a poll, how many ways could voters rank their first, second, and third choices? Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. All right, this is like finding the uh, number of permutations of seven elements taken three at a time. So we will do seven factorial over seven minus three factorial which is seven factorial over four factorial. Notice what we did there. It's seven times six times five times four times three times two times one over four times three times two times one. That cancels and you're just left with seven times six times five, which is 210. Here's another example. Uh, it's gonna have multiple parts to it. So pause as you come to each part and then resume to check your answer. So for part A, we just want to seat nine people in nine chairs and find out how many different combinations we could get. Um, and that's going to be just straight up nine factorial. And there are, believe it or not, 362,880 ways to order nine people in a row of nine chairs. For part B, we want to know how many ways they can be seated if the males and females have to be alternated. Pause the recording and think about this and then resume to check your answer. Okay, so you kind of have to think this through instead of using the formula. Um, there are five ways to fill the first seat and then four to fill the second, four to fill the third. So we're going to start with females because you have they have to start first because there's five of them. There's only four males. So there's five ways to choose your first girl then four to choose the first boy, then four to choose the second girl, and so on. You have to alternate that on down till you get the end. And there's 2,880. Uh, question C, in how many ways can the panelists be seated if the males must sit together and the females must sit together? Pause the recording and think about this and then resume to check your answer. So what you're going to do is you're going to decide how to arrange the two groups, males and females. So you're going to put all the guys on the left and the girls on the right or vice versa. There's two ways to do that or two factorial. Then you need to figure out how many different ways can you arrange all the girls and how many different ways can you arrange all the guys. So you're going to have two factorial times five factorial times four factorial. Multiplying all that together gives you 5,760. Now, permutations deal with choosing of objects when the order is important. Combinations, on the other hand, do not. So sometimes all we care about is the group itself. We don't care about the ordering of the members. For example, if we want to choose a committee of five students from a group of 12, it doesn't matter which one is first, second, third, fourth, fifth. It's just, it's forming a committee. You're not ranking them. You're not electing president, vice president. You're just forming a committee. So the order is not going to be important. And when this happens, this is called, like I said a minute ago, a combination. To calculate a combination, what we do is we figure out the permutation, but then we divide by the number of ways each group could be ordered. Because in a permutation, um, you could count the same group of five people multiple times because with the permutation, uh, every rearrangement of them is different. But in a combination, every different rearrangement of the order of five people, so those are all considered the same. So in combination, order is not important. In permutation, it is. And here's the formula for combination. And again, you do have this key in your calculator. It's in the math menu. Go to math, then the probability menu, and you will find it there. Here's the formula for finding it um, on your own. It's m factorial over m minus r factorial times r factorial. Notice that the n factorial over n minus r factorial is the formula for permutation. And then the r factorial is the number of ways that the group of r elements could be arranged. And so you're dividing that out. Okay, try uh, example 11. From a group of 10 students, a committee is to be chosen to meet with the dean. How many different three-person committees are possible? This is going to be a combination problem. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. 
So we have 10 students. We're choosing three at a time. It's 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. And what you can do here is you can do 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial, and that'll cancel with the 7 factorial on the bottom, and it makes the math a little easier if you're doing it by hand. Now see if you can figure out how many ways a 12-person jury can be chosen from a pool of 40 people. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. So 40 in combination of 12, 40 things uh, taken 12 at a time, 40 factorial over 28 factorial times 12 factorial, and you end up with, you can see there on the bottom, um, 5,586,853,480 ways to choose a 12-person jury from 40 people. Now try this problem. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, hopefully by now you've gotten the hang of this. Um, a combination of 30 items taken three at a time is 4,060. Now try this part of the problem. Pause the recording, give it a go, resume to check your answer. Okay, in this case, one manager has already been chosen, so that takes one person out of the pool. Now we just need two more managers from the remaining 29. So we're going to do a combination of 29 items taken two ways, and that narrows it down to 406. Now try this example. Pause the recording and then resume to check your answer. Okay, this is a little different because it's asking about at most three managers. So that could be, and it says it's non-empty, which means zero is not an option. So you could have one manager, two, or three. So what you're going to do is figure out the combination for one, two, or three, and then you'll add those together. And when you do that, you get 4,525. Now, it can be easy to confuse the two, so here's just a summary comparing them. Remember, with permutations, ordering is important. If you have um, two setups, combinations and permutations, with the same number of objects in the set, taking the same number at a time, the permutations will be larger than combinations, the number of combinations. Um, the permutations, the clue word is arrangement, schedule, order, combinations, group, committee, set, sample. Permutations order matters, combinations they don't. Now we're going to try some examples where they're mixed up. So you need to figure out, do I do a permutation or do I do a combination? Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, how many four-digit numbers are possible if no digits are repeated? Well, order is important here because if you're creating a four-digit number, the number 1, 2, 3, 4 is different from 4, 3, 2, 1. So you would use permutations. On part B, you don't care in what order you select three light bulbs. You just need three light bulbs. So it's going to be a combination. Pause and try these two and then resume to check your answer. Okay, for our basketball problem, the selection is an unordered. It doesn't matter what order you choose the teams just so they get chosen. So it's going to be a combination. For part D, the assignments are ordered selection of four rooms from the six rooms. Exchanging the rooms of any two patients will give a different assignment, so permutations should be used. So in here, you're, you're assigning patients to specific rooms, so the order does matter. And now try this example. Uh, first part, a manager must select four employees for promotion. Twelve employees are eligible. How many ways can those um, employees be chosen? And then B, in how many ways can four employees be chosen to be placed in four different jobs? Think about whether or not order is important and then solve these. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. 
Okay, like we said in the first one, the order doesn't matter. They just want to pick four employees for promotion. So you're going to use a combination and get 495. In Part B, order is important because you're assigning them to specific jobs. In this case, you'll use a permutation and get 11,880. Now try this example. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. The order in which the five numbers are chosen does not matter in this particular case, so you're going to use a combination of 59 things taken five at a time. And then there are 35 ways to choose one Powerball number from 1 to 35. So the multiplication principle, um, by the multiplication principle, the number of different selections is what you see here. So we find the combinations, we multiply by 35, and we get uh, let's see, 175,223,510. Try this example. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, we're going to break it into two parts. First, we're going to find uh, the number of ways to choose tops and then shorts. So for tops, we do 56, and shorts, we get 924, and these are combinations. The order doesn't matter. Um, we know there's 56 ways to choose the tank tops, 924 ways to choose the shorts, and by the multiplication principle, the complete number of um, combinations is going to be 56 times 924, which is 51,744. The rest of these are some extra practice problems. Pause the recording to try them and resume to check your answers. Do this until the uh, end of the recording.